Hello, today's daily reading comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 11. As always stated prior to reading, get to a church that has Bible study or Sunday school where the word can be broken down and shared with you for an easy understanding. Also, get with some friends who break bread and just have church with one another. Get you a Bible that you can read. There are numerous versions from King James and NIV. But most importantly, and above all things, call upon the Lord. If you knock at his door, he will answer and fill you up with wisdom if that is what you truly seek. Amen. Zechariah chapter 11 reads as follows. Open your doors, Lebanon, so that fire may devour your cedars. Well, you juniper, for the cedar has fallen. The stately trees are ruined. Well, oaks of Bashan, the dense forest has been cut down. Listen to the wall of the shepherds, their rich pasture. Pastures are destroyed. Listen to the roar of the lions. The lush thicket of the Jordan is ruined. This is what the Lord my God says. Shepherd, the flock mark for slaughter. Their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. Those who sell them say, praise the Lord, I am rich. Their own shepherds do not spare them, for I will no longer have pity on the people of the land, declares the Lord. I will give everyone into the hands of their neighbors and their king. They will devastate the land, and I will not rescue anyone from their hands. So I shepherd the flock marked for slaughter, particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staffs and called one favor and the other union, and I shepherd the flock. In one month I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them, and said, I will not be your shepherd. Let the dying die, and the per perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Then I took my staff called Favor and broke it, revo revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. It was revoked on that day. And so the oppressed of the flock who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they valued me, so I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord. Then I broke my second staff called Union, breaking the family bond between Judah and Israel. Then the Lord said to me, Take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost, or seek the young, or heal the injured, or feed the healthy, but will eat the meat of the choice sheep, tearing off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd who desires the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. Zechariah chapter 12. A prophecy, the word of the Lord concerning Israel. The Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms the human spirit within a person declares, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding people reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day I will strike every horse with panic and its riders with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over Judah but I will blind all the horses of the nations. Then the clans of Judah will say in their hearts, The people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. On that day I will make the clans of Judah like a fire pot and a wood pile, like a flaring torch among sheaves. They will consume all the surrounding peoples right and left, but Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first so that the honor of the house of David and of Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. On that day I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for any child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the weeping in Jerusalem will be as great as the weeping 
of Hadar Ramon in the plain of Megiddo. The plain, the land will mourn each clan by itself, with the wives by themselves, the clan of the house of David and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, the clan of Shemil and their wives, and all the rest of the clans and their wives. Zechariah chapter 12. On that day a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. On that day I will banish the names of the idols from the land and they will be remembered no more, declares the Lord Almighty. I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, their father and mother, to whom they were born, will say to them, You must die because you have told lies in the Lord's name. Then their own parents will stab the one who prophesies. On that day, every prophet will be ashamed of their prophetic vision. They will not put on a prophet's garment of hair in order to deceive. Each will say, I'm not a prophet. I am a farmer. The land has been my livelihood since my youth. If someone asks, what are these wounds on your body? They will answer, the wounds I was given at the house of my friends. Awake sword against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. In the whole land, declares the Lord, two-thirds will be struck down and perished, yet one-third will be left in it. The third I will put into the fire. I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, They are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Zechariah chapter 14. A day of the Lord is coming, Jerusalem, when your possessions will be plundered and divided up within your very walls. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women raped. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on a day of battle. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. On that day there will be neither sunlight nor cold, frosty darkness. It will be a unique day, a day known only to the Lord, with no distinction between day and night. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will flow out of, from Jerusalem, half of it east to the Dead Sea and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day there will be one Lord, and his name the only name. The whole land from Geba to Ramon south to Jerusalem will become like the Ereba, but Jerusalem will be raised up high from the Benjamin gate to the site of the first gate, to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hanah to the royal wine presses, and will remain in its place. It will be inhibited. Inhabit it never again. Will it be destroyed? Jerusalem will be secure. This is the plague with which the Lord will strike all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will not will rot while they are still standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in the, their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day, people will be stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will seize each other by the hand and attack one another. Judah, too, will fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the surrounding nations will be collected. Great quantities of gold and silver and clothing. A similar plague will strike the horses and mules, the camels and donkeys, and all the animals in those camps. Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles. If any of the people of the earth do not go to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. If the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations that do not go up 
to celebrate the festival of tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of tabernacles. On that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bales of the horses and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. Every pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord Almighty and all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day, there will be no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. Amen.